City Clerk. Uh, now we'll move on to item six, conduct of business. City Clerk. Item 6A, adopt a resolution supporting San Bruno businesses that qualified for the San Mateo County Strong Restaurant, Brewery, and Winery Relief Program and authorizing the appropriation of up to $290,000 from the Emergency Reserve Fund to provide individual business grants up to $10,000. Thank you, City Clerk. We have with us somebody from San Cita, uh, some may know, and that is uh, Mr. Don Cecil. We're going to turn it over to you, sir, for comments and our presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Is my audio okay? Perfect. Great. Thank you. So I'm going to screen share and do a quick presentation. Um, but first, I'd really like to thank City Manager Grogan, Mayor Medina, Vice Mayor Medina, Council Member Salazar, Mason, and Hamilton. You know, you all really have stepped up with this recommendation tonight and then leaning back in our home marketing phase to let San Bruno restaurants know about this program. Um, you all said yes when I asked for help. Um, Council Member Mason picked up a bunch of flyers at City Hall that I dropped off um, with some staff who were looking at me kind of curiously why I was even there to drop off a packet of flyers. And so it really shows in the response that we have received from San Bruno, uh, San Bruno restaurants. So very quickly here. Um, this idea was originally came up conversations that we had with the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. They allocated a million dollars for South County. Uh, the Board of Supervisors and Mike Callagy's office, Peggy Jensen, uh, quickly wanted to match that million dollars with a million dollars from the county. Plus, we had some other sources that got the county funding up to about $1.3 million. Uh, the program objectives were to support restaurants, breweries, and wineries that have suffered from the economic impact of COVID-19, ideally with $10,000 grants. Uh, we had an application portal we had a robust outreach, as robust as can be done in the middle of COVID, and still relying on business owners to upload information to a website. Uh, everything was in four languages, English, Spanish, Chinese, and Tagalog. We had um, email support, we had uh, phone support, and we really tried our best uh, to distribute this information as far and wide as possible. <clears throat> the other thing that we tried to do was to really make this as easy for a business owner as possible. So we were not asking for detailed tax returns. We were simply asking them to fill out a web-based application to determine their eligibility. And that included the name of the restaurant, where it was located, contact information, um, a relationship of the ownership, and then optional information about demographics, just to help us continue to build the profile of who the business owners are in San Mateo County and the help that they've been seeking. So for a restaurant, it was a brick and mortar location with a full service kitchen. For a brewery, it was a type 23 small beer manufacturer and for a winery, a type two wine grower. Um, ineligibility would have been an incomplete application failure to meet the eligibility criteria, a corporate-owned franchise, um, a, a restaurant operating in a hotel without a separate business license, and then also no pop-ups, no food trucks, no home-based businesses, um, micro-kitchens. Um, and then finally, if a restaurant had received very recent support through the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center's distribution of CARES Act funding from the county, um, uh, then, or if they had received over $200,000 in Great Plates revenue, they were not eligible to participate in this particular program. So for the city of San Bruno, we had a total of 54 applications, which, which was fantastic. And so when I say thank you to all of you, that number reflects your hard work and commitment to ensuring that your small business owners knew about this program. Uh, of the 54, three were duplicates, 13 were deemed ineligible, and 38 were deemed to likely be eligible based on the pre-application. <clears throat> the county funding through its allocation model um, allocated nine $10,000 grants or $90,000 to the city of San Bruno. And so why we're here this evening is um, we, have the, we have up to 29 remaining uh, restaurants in San Bruno who based on their pre-application appear to be 
um, eligible for the funding. And as we have become quite um, comfortable in doing, uh, we're here to ask for some money. Um, and so, you know, these 29 businesses have survived the pandemic. Um, these business owners are often immigrants themselves, women. Um, they employ immigrants and women. They're often family owned. And so should, should the council approve this request, um, it, it can often mean the difference between making it and not making it. So I will stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Cecil, thank you uh, for your presentation. Um, I, I want to thank you and, and Rosanna, who I know couldn't be here, serving on the San Mateo County Recovery Initiative, the Economic uh, Committee. I've seen all of this action happening and the, the good that is coming through the county and SAMCETA and other agencies to be where we are today. It was impressive to me to see uh, from Roseanne getting the email to the city manager and I on how many folks from San Bruno uh, that uh, participated or put in an application, shall we say, and I appreciate that. Um, two qu couple questions is, how did the program, uh, as people may ask, like, how did it get to be restaurants specific? And then, and I know it's very clear you can't tell us who the nine are or who the applicants are for obvious reasons, but can you give us a, a general idea that, you know, it, throughout our community? Uh, Mr. Cecil? Yeah, sure. So again, um, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative really came to the table with that first million dollars, and they wanted it specifically for restaurants. And as we talked through the idea, you know, we all sort of came to the conclusion every business is important, but there is just something special about restaurants. You know, they are where we go on our first dates, where we have the first birthdays of our children, where we have our parents' 50th anniversaries. Um, and all points in between. And, you know, and I'm, I'm the proud son of a San Bruno resident myself. My mother loves West Coast Cafe. And when you think to yourself, what would a community be without West Coast Cafe or all of those small business owners and restaurant owners on San Mateo Avenue or, you know, the Bun Me place at Bay Hill? they are really are a fabric of our community. And that's how we coalesced around this idea of restaurants, breweries, and wineries. Um, with regards to your second question, um, we're not able to um, give you exact names of restaurants at this point. So those that have been selected, when they accept the check, they accept having the name of their restaurant listed, and we just haven't compiled that list yet. Um, for those that haven't been selected or were deemed ineligible, you know, it. these are proud people who have survived. And we don't want to embarrass them by printing the name of their uh, business and saying, well, well, they weren't eligible. And until they get a check and accept that check, we also don't want to release that. What I can tell you, though, is the addresses of these restaurants are at Bay Hill. They're on San Mateo Avenue. They're along the El Camino Real. They are all over the city of San Bruno. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your uh, clarifying answers. And I'm going to bring it to uh, my colleagues first, and then we're going to um, open it up for uh, public input. Uh, Vice Mayor Medina. Yes. Uh, good seeing you, uh, Mr. Cecil. Uh, thank you for your work on, on, on this very important project. Um, my question involves how much feedback was given to those restaurants who were not eligible like did was maybe there a, was there a language barrier there or, or just wanted to make sure that um, people were given an opportunity to kind of fix something that was maybe a minor mistake so could you could you shed some light on that yes absolutely um, so uh, you know everything was all of our outreach was conducted in those four languages and anyone who was deemed ineligible um, received a letter stating that they were uneligible and offered them the opportunity to ask questions about why. Um, and, you know, I'll give you an example. We had a question that we sort of, after the fact, realized might have been awkwardly worded. It was the question about, 
how many, you know, do you own five or more restaurants in San Mateo County? And we realized that we could have asked that question better because we were getting, um, you know, we were getting a yes response from folks who just didn't seem like they owned more than five restaurants. And so we went back and did outreach to those people to ask that clarifying question. So, um, you know, if you, if you completely uh, filled out the application, it was incomplete or you weren't eligible, we didn't offer them the opportunity to go back and sort of fix it because that was one of the criteria. But in instances where things didn't make sense or folks had follow-up questions or in the instance that one question, you know, we did go out, uh, go back and do outreach for sure. Thank you. Council Member Hamilton. So um, thank you, Mr. Cecil, for, for the presentation and for, and for, uh, this, for your participation in this program. Um, uh, through the mayor, my question actually isn't, isn't for Mr. Cecil, but it's about the, the funding of it, of, of this. So should I ask that question now or wait until a different portion of the discussion? Thank you very much. Um, if it's okay, why don't we have questions for Mr. Cecil? Uh, we'll open it to the public and then we'll come back to council and then follow up with staff. Thank you very much, for Mr. Hamilton, for asking that. Um, Council Member Mason. Hey, I just will have a, a comment. I just wanted to, first of all, thank um, Mr. Cecil for a very quick response. Um, we had received an email, and um, the email included a flyer. And within 20, less than 24 hours, um, uh, Mr. Cecil ensured that I had copies in all of the languages uh, necessary to hand out um, and Council Member Hamilton joined me along with uh, residents uh, Stephen Seymour and Sandra Perez Vargas to hand deliver um, and, ha and really person to person speak with every one of the business owners that would qualify all along San Mateo, El Camino Real, we went to Bay Hill and Tan Fran. And so I'm so um, glad to see this result because I really believe that our small business community, especially our restaurants, are really what make our downtown and our city so diverse and so special because people come for this wide variety of, of food options. Um, I also just wanted to tell um, just a, a quick story that I thought really touched me in going um, place to place. It was clear that a number of our, especially our immigrant owner populations, um, didn't either felt that maybe they had received an email that may have been junk mail or may have been spam. Um, so those, uh, the door-to-door -door really solidified that this was a real opportunity. And so one of the, um, one of the restaurants I had been to, she had, it was a really beautiful story. Um, they had lived in Europe and they had lived in Thailand, um, each one for over 15 years working at restaurants, um, moved to the, uh, the United States, um, and for over 15 years both worked at a business. Um, and when COVID happened, they both got laid off. So um, wife and husband with a son uh, in college. And um, she continued to tell me how much they had really struggled in paying their rent and that they had been struggling since COVID. But when her husband came in and talked to us and then walked out, she began to cry. And so we just sat there. She cried and she said, I've never spent so much time with my husband. She said that they've always worked two jobs, one or two jobs. And she says that as difficult as COVID had been, she literally crying was telling me how grateful she is to have gotten to know her husband again and how sweet he's been to her since they've worked together. And so their hope is that their restaurant makes it here in San Bruno. Um, they, she went on and on about how they're living this American dream and that this restaurant would give them this opportunity to pursue this goal even at this age in their life. So I just wanted to really thank you, thank SMC for all the work that has been done around small business. And I really want to thank our staff for getting this staff report together because it is so needed in our with our business community. Um, so thank you, everybody. Okay, with no more hands from council, I'm going to, uh, uh, we have a, um, uh, I think it's Paul who would like to speak and city uh, clerk, if you can bring him in, please. Yes, Paul Wapensky. I was just uh, just a comment. Um, in the future, if they have programs like this, maybe they could uh, reduce it to like seventy five hundred dollars instead of ten thousand. That way, you could spread it out to more restaurants, more businesses. I, I know it's uh, you know just a thought, but at least more people would be able to, uh, to get some money and, and hopefully stay in business. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Not seeing any. Um 
Anybody else from the, the public will bring it back to council, and let's go right to council member Hamilton, which was going to be asking staff question on uh, expenditure. Right. So regarding the appropriating the 290000 from the emergency reserve fund for this, I, I'm absolutely in favor of, of appropriating the money. But I would, uh, I would uh, like to entertain for my, my colleagues um, slightly amending the, um, the resolution to direct that the 290000 um, that we take from the Emergency Reserve Fund now to pay for this now be replenished from the um, ARA funding once that funding is distributed. Because that's, that's the, one of the main purposes of that ARA funding would be for a program like this. And that's an excellent question, and thank you, because I think the city manager, uh, as, as we were talking about this topic coming on the agenda, I was trying to understand, and I know there's, you can fund it here, fund it there, and so I don't know if it's specifically, but there's other ways that the city manager explained to me on, on how we can. So city manager, you, you will articulate it much better than I could. Sure. Um, Javon Grogan, city manager. Absolutely. It's talked about in the staff report that we anticipate uh, this 290000 to be reimbursed by the American Rescue Act, the ARA funds. Uh, and so the city council, uh, I believe we have a uh, study session scheduled uh, for May where we will talk about um, uh, all of the potential allocations of the ARA monies, and I do not see a problem with adding that language to the resolution that is before you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, appreciate it. And I think people would want to know that, too, that it's not coming out of the general fund or the reserves, that it's monies that we're receiving from Washington um, through that $1.9 trillion that they uh, allocated to, to for various things in the county. I, I, I'm just going to say, you know, I, a lot of our communities and neighbors are also doing what they can to assist uh, uh, small businesses, and we have done that through the uh, Community Foundation and grants that could be open to anyone. Um, and so they have issued those as well that were open not just to this but to all businesses. So this is another opportunity. And, and speaking to just last week evening, uh, a business owner, um, you know, how tough it's been. really has been tough um, where they just had to close the place down because it just wasn't viable to keep it open and keep staff even with to-go. And little things like this may not seem like a lot to some in these times of what it costs for this or that. But really, it could be. It really can be. And in sitting on this committee to hear the stories and what have you of what that can do just to get them over the line, to get them as we start to reopen even further. Uh, I think this is something that the city can do and we should do, and there will be a time that we will all celebrate together, uh, maybe still with masks, but, uh, but we can be together. So um, other comments or um, thoughts or questions from my colleagues? If not, then I will say that this is a resolution, and do we have action by council? Motion to approve. Uh, m a motion made uh, to introduce the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, council Member Salazar. I just wanted to clarify that the motion will be with uh, Council Member Hamilton's uh, provision that it be replenished. See, uh, Council Member Hamilton, uh, somebody that has not forgotten you. Uh, uh, is that uh, okay with the motion maker and the seconder for that amendment into the resolution for clarification of uh, where the funds will be allocated? Yes, that's amended with uh, council members, um, yes. uh, council member Mason, I mean, council member, council member um, <laughs> Hamilton's uh, amendment. Uh, and then uh, there's a thumbs up from uh, Vice Mayor Medina. So with that said, uh, roll call please. Council member Hamilton? Aye. Council member Mason? Aye. Council member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor Marty Medina? Aye. Mayor Rico Medina? Aye. I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Cecil. Oh, I see you're showing the card. <laughs> I want to thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Cecil, for your, um, um, your help and your time and your presentation. And we wish you the very uh, best um, uh, in your future. Stay healthy, stay strong, and we look forward to seeing you in person real soon. And um, uh, and thank you for being here. Um, and okay, just as a clarity, because we were looking it up, um, you know, the San Bruno Foundation has probably given a little over four hundred thousand in grants. So 
they also have done their part. So I think this was a great step for the city, and, and appreciate everybody's effort.